In this tutorial, we're gonna take a look at a bunch of features that I think are pretty cool within Studio One. And before we get started, if you're someone who is having issues with Studio One or would like to speed up the learning curve, I do offer one-on-one -on -one training via Zoom. Or if you're someone who's been finding the tutorials helpful and would like to buy me a coffee or a beer, there's information for both of these in the description or the pinned comment below. And with that out of the way, let's go ahead and jump to the first tip or the first feature that I wanna show. And this is gonna be making use of the tab key on your QWERTY keyboard. So if I select this MIDI part up at the top, you do need to select this first. I can press the tab key to tab to each individual MIDI note, and we can access these and get to an area very precisely to quickly make an edit. So if I wanted to say cut, at this MIDI note that I've tabbed to. I could use shortcut keys that I've created, Control, Shift, and C to split that event there at that MIDI note. And Studio One actually has a built-in shortcut key. Alt plus X will accomplish the same thing. So my shortcut is a little bit redundant, but you can see how you can use the tab to get to precise locations for the MIDI notes to perform your edit. I'm going to Control Z to undo that split. And since we're talking about shortcut keys, uh, let's go ahead and take a look at how you can go about adding those. So up at the top, if we come to Studio One, at the very bottom we have keyboard shortcuts. So if there is a specific action that you like to add shortcut keys to that Studio One does not already have, then you can search for that action. And what I did was split at cursor. So I'm gonna type in split, and then we can see under edit, we have split at cursor. If I click once to select that, we can see the shortcut key that I've added. Now, if anytime you'd like to remove shortcut keys that you have added, you can click on the remove, um, but this would be blank if you were to come to split a cursor by default. And if I just hold down the keys, control shift and C, then that's added. You can click on the assign. But as I mentioned, Studio One already has Alt X that's gonna place a cut at the MIDI part or audio event. So I don't necessarily need to this, so I'll go ahead and remove that and apply it. Now, coming back to our previous example, you saw that I used tab to move to the individual MIDI notes. If I hold shift and press tab, then this is actually going to select by the individual notes. So as I hold shift and continue to press tab, then I can select these notes and move this to a different location on the tracks, or I could bring it down and create an entirely new track and put an instrument here for these MIDI notes to trigger. I'm going to undo this though. Now, another cool feature that we could use while we have this range selected is to have Studio One automatically bounce this down to audio within sample one or impact. So on this track below, I have a sample one and notice that I do have this pinned. It's important that you pin this first before you perform this action, but I could then take this MIDI part that I've selected drag it onto the sample view window, and then that's Studio One's gonna automatically bounce that down to audio, and I can then trigger. The rendered audio from this specific range there. And as I mentioned, we can do that same action with impact and drag this range to a pad. Studio One will render that to audio, and you can then trigger it with an impact. Let's go ahead and close out that sample one. And the next thing we're gonna take a look at is quickly accessing your tools. Now, if I press control, then you notice that my cursor is going to change to the split tool. And then I can come in and make cuts. Let's undo that. And the reason for this is because if you notice this blue line, that is gonna be our alternate tool. Whatever this is under, when you hold control, it's gonna to switch to that tool. We can change what tool it's under by continually pressing one on your numeric uh, or your QWERTY keyboard, not the numeric keypad, but on the QWERTY keyboard. So I'll repeatedly press one. We see that switches to the eraser. So now when I hold control, we switch to the eraser. Pressing one again, then we have the paint tool and so on. You can just continue to cycle through to whatever tool you'd like to be your alternate tool when you press control. Now, something else that we could do, if you have a mouse that has a wheel that's clickable, you can click once and hold and then select a tool like so. So just click 
the mouse wheel and hold, and then you can choose a different tool here. I'll click again and come back to the cursor. Now we can also right click in an empty area of the arrange view and access the tools this way as well. And of course we have the shortcut keys at the top of the QWERTY keyboard. One is going to be the cursor and this is switching because it's already selected. I could press two for the range tool, three the split tool, four eraser, and so on through to eight to access the uh, playback tool. I forget what this is called, the listen tool. So let's press one to come back to the cursor. Now the next feature that we'll take a look at is chase long notes. So I'm gonna mute this present that has the bass on it and start playback with the cursor here. Now we don't hear these MIDI notes being played back. If we come to the beginning, then they are triggered. But if we start while they're there, then you're not gonna hear anything. And you have to wait for this to loop back over it to come to the beginning of these MIDI notes. But we can turn on the chase long notes feature and then no matter where you play, it's going to um, begin playback, it's gonna trigger those notes. So if we come to the Studio One options menu, you can also press Control comma. Let's come to the advanced, then the MIDI tab. And then we can see here we have chase long notes. Let's activate that and apply, okay. So now, even though we're not starting at the beginning of these MIDI notes, as soon as I press the space bar to play back, then we are triggering those notes. If I come here where we were before and didn't have playback of audio, we do have it now. And I'm not sure if the chase long notes feature is on or off by default, but uh, if yours is not playing back audio when you trigger on these longer notes, then you now know where to access that feature. Now the next thing I want to talk about is how we can quickly cut and separate audio events, portions of these events um, with the range tool. So when you have the bracket on up here, then the cursor is going to change to the range tool when you hover in the upper area. If yours is not doing that, then that's because this is off. Some people like this on and some people don't. I typically have it off actually, but as we move to the top here, if I wanted to move or separate this region here, all I have to do is come to the top, select that, then come to the bottom with the cursor, and then I can move this anywhere, drag it down to an entirely new track, but let's undo that. Just know that you can also, so let's select that. Let's actually select this range here. And then while this is highlighted, if I double click at the top, then that creates an entirely new event. So if you're doing lots of editing like this, this is gonna be a really quick way to do that instead of maybe say using the split tool, making a cut here, making a cut here to create that separate event. Now that we've created these separate events, let's take a look at or talk about overlaps. Now this is a feature that a lot of people were requesting for a while and it was added a little while ago, uh, maybe within the last year. So by default, if I take this newly created event, if I just click once to highlight that and then click, hold and drag that over to the left on top of this other event, then this is going to overlap. We can tell by that gray uh, box there that these are overlapping. If I come back, then the information is still there. But if we come to the wrench icon and under the editing, we can choose the no overlap when editing events. So I'll go ahead and check that. Then the behavior is gonna be a lot different. We're actually going to delete the area of this event that we drag this one over. So now when I drag it over the same area, we don't have that gray box here. And if I pull this back to the right, we can see that actually this portion of this first event has been deleted when we drag this over now with the no overlaps turned on. So some people will like this feature and have been missing it and wanted it. For me, I uh, don't particularly like that behavior, but it's there for those of you who like that functionality when you're editing. Now let's come up to our MIDI part. And if I right click on this and then come to the event section here, you can see that near the center area here, we have split at grid. And this did not have shortcut keys before. I'm not sure exactly when this was added, but we can use this vertical bar or pipe 
to uh, now split at grid with the shortcut key there. So my grid setting is 16th. Uh, let's change that to quarter notes. So now with this MIDI part selected, I can hold shift and press that vertical bar, which is on the same key as the backslash. And this is gonna split that MIDI part into our quarter note quantize value. Now, of course, as we looked at at the beginning of the video, you could have added your own shortcut keys, but just know if you were not aware of this feature, you can quickly make these cuts uh, by using shift and the vertical bar on your QWERTY keyboard. Now, something else that may be a bit basic, but may have been driving some of you crazy, is that when we click in an empty area of the range view, our cursor remains at its location. And normally we have to click in the ruler to change its position, but we can come to the wrench icon at the top of the track column and then select locate when clicked in empty space. I'll put a check there. And then now when we click in an empty space, our cursor will be moved to that location. So if this is how you prefer working, just know that that option is available here. Let me take the no overlaps off and I'll take this locate when clicked off. Let's then move on to the mix console just to show some metering options that we have that you may not be aware of. It's kind of hidden. So when we come to a meter on the channels, if we right click, we have a few options where we can choose peak, peak RMS, and we can choose the length of the RMS here. We have peak hold and the hold length and pre-fader metering. So these are available if you'd like to ever change the view of your meter on the channels. Now, if we come over to the master channel, there's options here as well. So I'll right click on the meter and we can see that by default, this is gonna be on peak RMS, but we can actually use uh, K20, 14 or 12. We've got RMS length, peak hold, hold length and pre-fader metering. Now also within the console, there was a new simple but handy feature that was added in the 5.4 update, and that is removing multiple sends at once. So before, when we had a couple of different effects sends that we were sending this channel to, we would come here and then remove them individually down at the bottom, but we can now come up to the top, the sends, click on the down arrow and remove all at one time. So that can save you a lot of time if you have tons of tracks and multiple sends on maybe many of those tracks. Now, another new feature that was recently added is plugin nap. Let's close out the mix console and we can access this by clicking on the performance down in the transport here, bottom left-hand corner. I'll click once and we open up the performance monitor. Now we can see we have enabled plugin nap there. So we click once to activate that, but I'm gonna come down to the bottom and choose show devices. So here we can see CPU activity for the plugins that we have within this song. And if you notice here that our analog delay and the sample one or the room reverb, I'm sorry, uh, do have some activity for the CPU here. And up at the top, we can see our CPU is at 8% usage. Now, if I enable the plugin nap, basically this is gonna mean that anytime these devices or these plugins are not actively processing audio, they are going to go to sleep. We can see the little moon there. And now our CPU usage has dropped to 2% and we see no activity on the CPU for the analog delay and room reverb. Now, if I press play, then there is no activity on here. And that is because our Presence here is muted, so if I unmute that, uh, let's see, let's come to the top here. If we click here, then we can see what's being sent there. So the sample one, so actually the sample one is not being triggered within the song, so that's why. Let's uh, send this to effects one and effects two, because there is activity on that. Let's also add the sends to the audio event that's in there. So now when we play back, the moon should go away and we can see we now have activity again. If I stop playback, then these are gonna go to sleep in a second after the reverb ends and all of the processing is finished.
Okay, and so for the last thing, we're going to take a look at another simple but useful feature, particularly if you're someone who has tons of songs that you're working on, and we're going to jump over to the start page for this. We now have a search feature. So if you've got a long list of tracks here, songs that you've been working on, and you are having problems finding what you're looking for, you can always click on the magnifying glass. This is not an issue for me, of course. You can see how few songs I have here. But if I type in cool, then we can see the search results that are going to pop up for that. We can click on the X to remove that, and we return to the previous listed ones. To hide the search, we would just click on the magnifying glass again. So just be aware that that was recently added and available to help you find your songs. And with that, I think we will go ahead and wrap up. So some of these were simple features, but can be incredibly useful when you're editing or working on your tracks. So I hope that you found something that's going to help you in your future productions. If you have any questions or comments, go ahead and leave them below. Otherwise, I will see you in the next tutorial. Thanks for watching.